since 2013, I've been out no water. It's 2020 now, and I still have no water. I was incarcerated for two years. This house was empty for two years. And the water bill was just as high as it is when I'm living here. They still bill me for water when there wasn't nobody living here. That's wrong. Like, if you don't use water, you shouldn't have to pay for water. I mean, it's just that simple. You, you know you go through these things being black, let's face it, you know? It can happen. And sometimes you, you say to yourself when you come out, say, they just doing this to me because I'm black, you know? Or because I'm a woman, you know? But nothing you can do about it. That grand, granddad, papa, can, you, can, can, can we have some water? Can we have some Kool-Aid? Can you fix some breakfast? I can't do anything with no water. I lost so much, and then I lost a wife because she couldn't stay in the house with me. No water. Nobody can live like that. How I did, I just didn't give up. And then when, when, when the, the defense fund agency came into the picture, it was well worth of everything that I went through. I'm still going through. Well, Cody Montag is the lead counsel on this case, and in the summer of 2018, she embarked on a research sabbatical through LDF's Thurgood Marshall Institute, where she looked into the impact of increasing unaffordability of water, and especially its impact on black communities. And one of the issues that she ran into was the practice of municipalities taking uh, unpaid water debt and placing liens on people's homes because of that debt. So she came across some reporting by the Cleveland uh, News 5 team that showed that Cleveland was placing thousands of liens on homes for unpaid water debt. And as she started looking into this further, she determined through her research that this had a disproportionate impact on black neighborhoods in Cleveland. And that was the research that led to this lawsuit. Basically, um, a friend of mine had told me that my house was in foreclosure. I didn't know, and I looked, and it was a 20,000 lien placed upon my home from an old water bill. I basically went down to the treasurer and um, set up a payment plan for the money that I owed them for my property taxes. At that time, they, haven't, um, they didn't put their water bill on my taxes at that time, so I had to set up a payment plan for five years which was 206 for five years, which was $15,000 or whatever. And so they took the lien off the home, but I was still in foreclosure. If I didn't pay the, the, the lien off, I was going to go back in foreclosure and they was going to sell my home. The city of Cleveland's policy of taking overdue water bills and placing them on people's tax obligations as a lien against their property places people in danger of losing their homes due to tax foreclosure. From 2014 through 2018, Cleveland Water placed more than 11,000 liens on people's properties due to unpaid water bills. This practice is bad enough as is, but it disproportionately hurts black communities. For example, in 2017, more than 70% of water liens were placed in majority black neighborhoods, and that's despite the fact that the county as a whole is only 30% black. By contrast, only 18% of water liens were placed in majority white neighborhoods. Even if you compare neighborhoods of the same income level, this disproportionate impact still persists. There are still more water liens placed in majority black neighborhoods than in majority white neighborhoods in the county. And so black residents of Cleveland have a disproportionately higher risk of losing their homes because of an unpaid water bill. And that is discrimination, and that's a violation of the Fair Housing Act. Well, I came back home in 2010 after my mother passed. and. When she passed away, she had uh, left a few bills. One of them, of course, was the was water bill. Now, I didn't know that I was going to take over the bills, which I had no problem with it. But at that same time, I needed at least some kind of leeway to be able to, to make payments with the bill. And I tried everything I could to um, make uh, preparations to pay the bills, and they wouldn't they wouldn't give me no type of leeway, anything. They told me I had to pay the whole thing off, uh, and I couldn't do it right there. Are they gonna take my house? It might be this month, or not next month, or anything like that. If something go wrong with the house, and you go and have to, uh, I just say, put a roof on, uh, put some 
the first thing you think about it, well, if I do this and then they come along and take it, I could have had that couple hundred dollars, <laughs> you know? We were $11,000 behind. Me and my sister took out a loan for $10,000 almost $11,000. It was, it was uh, shy of $592. We paid this. They would still send me bills for $2,700, and we just paid $10,000 some dollars to, to, to have this cleared up. It's affecting us bad because when you start talking about water bills in the teens, and they want you to pay this. And the average one of us living from paycheck to paycheck, they don't have that extra to come in. It just isn't making it, especially we were retired people. You see, we, we just don't have it. I don't mind paying the bill, but I need, I need some type of help, something that's reasonable that I could, that I could, that I could manage. Anybody that can come up with 10,000 some odd dollars just for a water bill, just on, for taxes, just because the value of something sacred was more than, is worth more than money. Cleveland Water has set up a review board, which is supposed to allow customers to dispute their water bills customers we know are not told about their um, rights to go before the water review board um, and a lot of customers just simply don't know so um, because of that you know it's it's kind of hard for people to voice concern where they don't know that they have the right in the first place a lot of that could also be attributed to poor customer service um, a lot of people who we've spoken with have had poor experiences with Cleveland Water um, when it comes to uh, being able to talk to them about their water bills. I went to the water review board. I don't know if this was the real water review board. I don't really know how many people are supposed to be there, but I went down there with the legal aid attorney and they was telling her basically when you went down there, all they do is bring you the bill. And when you're done talking to them, they tell you you got to pay it. It ain't, it ain't no in between with them. It ain't no, they don't, they don't give you no relief at the water company, man. Even if they were savvy enough to request a hearing, we found out that 72% of people who requested a hearing during that time never received a hearing at all. Um, based on data that was provided to us by Cleveland Water, um, 857 customers requested water review board hearings um, to address what they believe were inaccuracies on their water bill um, between the period of 2013 and 2018. Um, despite that request, the records showed that 72% of people were never provided a hearing because Cleveland Water claimed that their disputes were resolved before a hearing could take place. I mean, it don't really matter where you're born. I feel no, nobody should have to go through this issue with water. You shouldn't be overcharged. You shouldn't be charged for water you don't use. Your water bill shouldn't be on your property taxes, period. We believe Cleveland Water's processes for giving notice to customers of an impending shutoff and for conducting hearings is constitutionally deficient in violation of the U.S. Constitution as well as the Ohio State Constitution. Uh, we know that Cleveland Water inexplicably overbills many of their customers. Uh, we also know that Cleveland Water fails to provide notice to many of their customers prior to terminating their service. Between 2013 and 2017, 72,000 people complained about overbilling on their water bills. In 2015 alone, Cleveland Water received about 16,000 water customers complaints related to overbilling. We believe if we're successful in this lawsuit, it will give other communities around the country pause and cause them to assess whether or not their water billing practices have a disproportionate impact on communities of color. Ultimately, we're asking the court to decide whether Cleveland's practices violate the Fair Housing Act, violate Ohio law, and violate the due process protections of the U.S. Constitution and the Ohio Constitution. It's going to be a long road of litigation ahead of us to get to that point, but ultimately we are trying to end Cleveland Water's practice of taking unpaid water debt and placing them as liens on people's homes. We want the city of Cleveland to adopt fair water practices accurate and reliable billing, 
fair processes for residents to contest their bills and notice an opportunity to be heard before the city shuts off your water. And ultimately, no more water lanes. There is just no justification for the city's practice of placing water lanes. It's not an effective way to collect money for the city. And we know this because Cleveland recovered less than 1% of its annual revenue through the, through the lien process. Water lanes have got to go. We also want the city to fairly compensate residents who have suffered under its policies. Those who have gone without water, those who have been overbilled, and those who have lived under the threat of foreclosure looming over them. They deserve justice. Cleveland Water must change its practices to ensure all residents have access to clean, affordable water. A basic human right.